From comments on my blog site, I know that sewing bags and totes is one of the most searched for sewing topics. I like to create bags myself, the roomy hobo tote style being my current favorite. Often designed with interior seams, this tote is an ideal palette to showcase a casual, coordinated fabric collection. Or, a tote can take a classic look by adding tailored touches and using a sophisticated color combo. Hobo totes, casual to classic, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. A hobo tote is a generic term for bags and totes that are large and oversized. You'll find hobo tote patterns for bags and totes or templates. They'll have many different designs. They're big, they're usually colorful with several different seams, many times interior seams for patterns or even for templates. Behind me I have examples of some totes that this is what I was talking about earlier where you can use fabric combinations, fat quarters perhaps, or just a coordinates of groups together. The totes themselves are as I said, our pig. You could put it, probably put a purse within in a bag, use it for shopping, for traveling, for going to the gym, and you can personalize it in one color, two fabric colors, or just all one solid color. So they're fun to work with. The techniques I'm going to show you today are not in making one specific type of hobo pattern, but to make it from casual to classic, different styles. But it's important to start with the basics of fabrics, and how to work with the totes and make the fabrics beefy enough to hold perhaps your exercise clothes or going to shop or for shopping. If you're working with a coordinate collection, many times they're available in cottons. Cottons are lightweight. They certainly don't have enough substance for a traditional bag. So what we like to do is to interface, add fusible interfacing to the fabric. Just a lightweight fusible gives it a little extra substance and support and stability. You can cut out your patterns or trace your templates, whatever you may be working with. And I'm going to, for this program, use a template. And on the interfacing side, I've started already to trace the size that I have. This particular section is the lower portion of the tote. The next template is going to show you is the upper portion. It kind of looks almost like a dress top, but that's the shape of this template. If you'd like to make it out of two fabrics, there's two colors of fabrics, there's a green line that you place on the fold of the fabric and then do the tracing. So then you just cut out your pattern pieces. The sample that I'm working with right now is of featuring different fabrics, four different fabrics for the front and you can use the same four fabrics for the flip side. They've been interfaced, you would sew them together vertical seams, crosswise seams, you get the idea to make one big palette with fun fabrics. But if you look at this fabric, it just isn't going to cut it when it comes to carrying weight in your tote. So you need a craft interfacing. And we've used this in other Sewing with Nancy programs for bags and totes. You'll recognize it when you're at a fabric store. You don't fuse it on, you sew it on, but it is a great interfacing to place, again, in addition to that fusible. And I like to cut this rather than having all the seams, just cut it in one big piece. So I trace the shape of the template on here. And then rather than, whoop, I guess tracing straight would work out better. There we go. Rather than cutting it this size, then I would overlap my other piece, which by half of an inch, and I'm just going to eyeball it half of an inch, since there are fourth of an inch seam allowances, and trace around this. And then I would flip it and make a full size. In other words, eliminating those seam allowances from the middle. So if your pattern has interior seam allowances, eliminate them. 
and then cut out the shapes so that you have a stability piece that holds all the fabrics together. So whatever pattern you're working with, do shape it with a craft interfacing. Then I'll show you on a two color fabric after you've sewn the seams together, then place it on that interfacing. And we've added some trim over that seam, just some fun trim. It could be ribbon, it could be bias tape. If you had four quadrants, you divide it into four, just for some fun. But then when I build a bag, I build it from the bottom up, sewing the lower seam together as I have here, and then I add a base interfacing. This is a plastic for bags, the bottom of bags, and you can stitch it in place. Can't pin it, it'll bend the pin, so you use double-sided basting tape. Remove, that's the hardest part, <laughs> removing the tape, and then you can stick it down and trim. The template has, the one I'm working with, has notations where feet can be placed, and you can add those if you'd like. I'll show you later in the program. And then you construct the bag. But adding the stability of the craft interfacing, the plastic bottom will make these totes durable. Classic colors and the addition of belt loops make this version of the hobo tote very adaptable. A modified belt takes center stage in this look. Next, you can change the look in seconds by replacing the belt with a scarf. Here's how to create your very own quick change hobo tote. When working with this style, choose a pattern that has a horizontal seam. And there are plenty of big tote bags, the template that I used, or this one as an example that has a seam that we can add the belt or a scarf. And this isn't a whole belt. It's a belt that has been cut and goes through belt loops, as you can see. And it's attached with some hook and loop tape around the belt loop, so it's split into two. And then I'll release this section. Look for a belt that's woven, because that was a little easier to sew than maybe a stiff leather belt. But maybe you have a belt in your closet you're not wearing. And then the change is to start stringing a scarf through the back and the front. The belt just went through the front piece, but I really like this look. From fall to spring, you can change the looks just by the scarf that you put on. I'm going to skip some belt loops just to save some time, but you get the general idea of what's happening here. So I think this is a fun combination. Choose two fabrics that you have a lot in your wardrobe and you can make that quick change. The belt loops are the main feature that you have to look for or add before you do a lot of sewing. We chose a strap technique working with a fusible strap that ends up being 5 eighths of an inch wide. You fuse it to one and a quarter inch strips of fabric, then cut eight that are five and a half inches in length. And you press along the perforations, I think you get that idea, press crisp, make it so it's crisp, and then after you have the five and a half inch lengths, fold in half, meeting the short ends, and to make those belt loops, simply stitch along both sides so that they're firm. Then position them on the front and back, the top portion. You always want one in the center, another one at the ends for the front, meaning close to the side seams. Let me show you what I mean. You would like your belt loops to be two and a half inches from the lower edge. And I'm going to place the end belt loops three-fourths of an inch in. So two and a half inches, then one in the center, and then equidistance put another one. So you're going to have five across the front. In the back, you'll only need three. You don't need the side seam one. Sew across the top pieces, just across the top of the belt loops. Then to get a little extra give in the belt loops, meet the edges to the edge of the belt loops and then baste across the bottom. It's just placing five in the front, three in the back. Then sew the horizontal seam, attaching the belt loops. There you go. Now to make the belt change. I'm going to place a belt across this area, and you'd like your belt buckle to be in the center. And then after you have it in the center, measure three inches. Where is my 
tape measure, here we go, or my gauge, and measure three inches from the edge and place a piece of tape. And then zigzag. Zigzag across the belt. Do the same on the other end so that you are measuring an extra three inches. Now I'm going to cut right after my zigzag. It takes a little courage to do that first cut and perhaps you can see that I've stitched hook and loop tape four inches apart and that's how it's going to attach to the belt. So when it slips in just like this it's going to wrap around or slip under the first two belt loops and then around the last one. And you do the same to the other side and then they meet together and you can have your belt loop as a change. With a scarf it's going to loop all the way around and then you have a quick change hobo tote. This tote is equally laid back and trendy using a reversible quilted cotton fabric create a tote that measures up to the popular ready-made brands. Using reversible fabric the lining of your tote is omitted making this a speedy tote to stitch. Now you can use any of the hobo tote patterns or a big slouchy bag pattern for a quilted fabric and the quilted fabrics usually reversible they should be reversible for this project come in pretty colors you can see our tote that we have here there's a lot of differences and first of all the lining is gone because it looks just as good on the inside as it does on the outside and it's thick but the snaps that we normally have in the lining need to go another place and we have them in a little pocket that with a stiffener in it a plastic stiffener so that you can easily keep your tote closed the bag bottom is different. It's removable. It's not stitched into the bag. And I'll show you how to create a pocket. I think you can figure that out. Just a pocket for the bag bottom plastic. And then since it's not lined where the lining would normally finish the bag, we've just used some of the self fabric to finish the edges just to create a nice bound edge. I can't possibly show you all the techniques of putting this together, just the differences of working with a quilted fabric. This is the sample from earlier in the program where I showed you the craft interfacing and the bag bottom stitched to the lower portion of the bag. Well, we're going to change that. And here you can see the quilted fabric. It's just sewn. The trim has been added my little note to myself there and as well as you can place feet in here if you'd like. If you'd like to place feet use some of that fabric it's really not fabric it's plastic that you use for the bag bottom cut it in little squares and attach that use follow the instructions on the package how to put the feet on place a layer of this over the disc or under the disc I should say so that it gives it more support and probably here we go we get the feet and the discs and you you'll have to use a usually use a little hammer to get that which I'm not going to do right now but it shows you just how you can give that bag some, some support even though you don't have the interfacing there. So that's just a few tips. Seaming. You're going to seam. I like to use a serger. Here you can see that I'm serging using right sides together a wide four thread overlock stitch. Now when you look inside the bag you'll see some differences as I pointed out earlier that snap there's a hanging snap and the snap usually would go in the lining. We cut a piece of the craft the bag bottom interfacing about one and a half by two and a half it really doesn't matter and made a little pocket for it. So I cut a piece of fabric wider and long double the length sewed the side seams, turned it right side out and then you'd insert right into the middle so that you'd have this and then after that's inserted which I'm not doing right now you just place a snap through all layers. Make two of these. One is placed at the center of one side and the center of the other side and it's caught in the seam and that will make it nice and secure. If you wondered where I got that fabric, well I used the quilted fabric but separated it. And you can use this for trim, just cut whatever you'd like and then with your scissors clip the threads so that you have double layers of fabric. My last tip when you're using quilted fabric, edges that are usually finished with lining need some finishing. So this edge 
has a binding on the edge. I simply cut bias strips of the quilted fabric, separated the fabrics, and then one and a half inch strip was folded in half, stitched to the edge and with a fourth of an inch seam and wrapped around. The final stitching can be top stitched or machine stitched. So with a double quilted fabric, you can create a bag in an evening or two. If you're sporting a pair of the ever so popular sheepskin boots, complete the look with a hug tote. The fabric looks like sheepskin, but it's faux and soft like a hug, hence the name. Using many of the same sewing techniques from the cotton quilted bag, make your own sheepskin tote in an evening or two. As I mentioned, you're going to eliminate the lining and use many of the same techniques I showed you earlier for the quilted bag when working with the fabric that has a fleece on one side and a faux suede on the other. But as we look at the detail of this very soft tote, you'll notice, of course, the seaming. And it is, this is not trim, this is obviously the reverse side or the inside of the fabric. So to work with this, we're gonna make a little change, a change to the pattern pieces, or in this instance, the template pieces, if you have horizontal or interior seams. And I have some of the fabric to show you the cutting techniques. You're gonna cut one layer at a time, not two layers. Why? It's so thick that if you cut two layers at a time, it will shift. You'll not have the same size pieces. So we've traced a front and the reverse side of the front on, on the faux suede or the faux sheepskin, tracing the tops, but the horizontal and the vertical interior, I added 3 8 of an inch, if you can see the light pink lines flipped it over, did the same on the other side. So that wherever there was an interior, interior seam, added 3 eighths of an inch to make it 5 eighths. And you trace out all your pattern pieces. Now with cutting, you're not gonna cut through all the fabric like you normally would, but rather cut through the backing, which is the faux suede. And I've started here, and you'd cut on a flat surface, but guide your scissors along the suede. Not cutting like through the Sherpa, otherwise you're gonna have a snowfall on your lap or on the floor. So just cut and then it separates. And that works much easier that way. You don't have to do as much vacuuming. Now for sewing, you're going to meet wrong sides together, or in this instance, Sherpa sides together. And pin and notice how lofty it is. Because of this loft, if you have a walking foot for your machine, please attach that. It will feed the top and the bottom layer at a more even consistent rate. The first stitch with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance is just a straight stitch. And I've lengthened it to about 3.0 millimeters of a length. And you can see the bulk, but it really doesn't shift as it did when I sewed the first time without the walking foot. So here I've just a straight stitch and I'll cut the threads. And then you're going to set your machine for a zigzag stitch. And I'll just quickly go over here and set it for a zigzag. And the width, I'm going to make it to about two millimeters and the length about 2.5. Just lengthen that, here we go. Now get out your seam ripper or your stiletto or all because you're going to sew on the right side, the, sh the suede side at the very edge. And to do this, you're just going to kind of guide the fabric away. I have red thread in here. You can hardly see the red thread because it's buried in the nap, but it, you want to make sure that you catch the edge. And so that's why you need a, a blunt tool to help you do the stitching. And it's fast, you don't press this. If you needed to steam away a wrinkle, just do that, steam it. And when I show you the seam, you'll see that it's been stitched down, but you can't even see the stitching, even though the thread is red. So for your hub tote, use the quilted techniques, plus expose the seam for softness.
thinking about making a quilt design from, oh, let's say the 1920s, but not sure which style was the most popular back then? Your research is just a click away. Over 50,000 quilts are cataloged for your browsing and researching enjoyment. Here to tell us about this convenient website is Amy Milne, representing the Quilt Index, who joins us via Skype. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Amy. Thank you, it's great to be here. When I heard about this index that had over 50,000 quilts, I was so impressed and give our viewers an overview of quiltindex.org. Sure, it's been a long time coming. The uh, Quilt Index has uh, been online for about 10 years, uh, but was in research and development before that. And mm -hmm. as you probably know, all the most of the of the states or regions have done quilt documentation projects, but all of those resources were uh, sitting in filing cabinets and right. offices across the country. And this project is an attempt to get all of those records in one place so that it's sort of a one-stop shop for inspiration and research. Um, so if I were going to research a, a quilt project, or how would I go about it? Sure. There are a lot of ways to um, use the quilt index. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple ways that I think are really helpful for someone just using it for the first time is to use the browse tools. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's an example. If you go to the Quilt Index, which is quiltindex.org, there are a couple menus across the top, and one of them is Browse. And if you select Browse and then choose um, Main, it will give you a lot of different options. One of the options that's really neat is to choose a style or a technique. Sure. Um, and so one of the techniques that I chose was strips or bands. Mm -hmm. um, so if you choose that technique and go and look, I think it returns something like five 500 results. Uh, so, you know, di which can be mind blowing, but you can view them as a grid. So it's sort of nice to see them all together mm -hmm. like a quilt themselves. Yes. And then, yeah, and select one and see more about it, either a, a basic view with just the basic information or a detailed view. Um, so some of the quilts that you might find might have a specific pattern within mm -hmm. that yes. category. So another way you might browse might be to choose a pattern like a Roman stripe. Yes. So you could go to the browse category or the browse menu and choose browse by pattern. Um, and that will give you over 200 uh, common patterns to uh, explore. They came from Barbara Brackman's book, Encyclopedia uh, of Peace Patterns. Uh -huh. And so if you choose the Roman stripe, you would get, I think, you know, probably 100 or more records. And it allows you to go in and select them. You can compare them, move them around on the page like mm -hmm. you would with a, with a scrapbook. Um, well, it's so valuable because you can see ideas that will inspire, of course, your project. And it's just a, also a history lesson. Exactly, because of those um, quilts, uh, you know, when you do a search, you're going to find that you are seeing quilts from several centuries. Uh, so it's it's fascinating. So tell us how, from what areas of the country or world do you have quilts that are represented on Quilt Index? Well, uh, from all over the United States, and in fact, right now, one of our uh, we've just uh, finished a project to internationalize or start uh -huh. to look sure. at how we can internationalize. We've added quilts from Canada and from South Africa recently, and our next objective is to try to get fill in the gaps so that we have quilts from all fifty states. Well, this is such a wonderful resource, and it a style period, even colors of quilts, you can browse yes. by color. So if you were wanting yes. to make a blue quilt, you could see color combinations. Yeah, in fact, one of my favorite searches, I'm really interested in two color quilts, black oh, and sure. white quilts, mm -hmm. black and red quilts. And so I did a search just uh, recently that if you search, you can also use the search menu, so that's a little more refined. And I chose search, um, and then I used two fields. One of them was, I think, I'm going to look at my notes, predominant color, uh -huh. and I chose, two, uh, chose predominant color of black. And then I did um, overall 
all color two colors and it wow. returned i think 80 quilts and they were from almost every state including wisconsin <laughs> uh, from the dar from the royal alberta museum but they were stunning oh. stunning quilts from from at least two centuries well amy this is an exciting site exciting project i know i'm going to go there thank you for being with us great thanks for having me uh -huh. And thank you for watching Sewing with Nancy for our program on Hobo Totes, Casual to Classic. I hope you've picked up some ideas and go to nancyzeman.com to watch the program again, watch 52 shows online, find out more at Nancy's Corner, including our, about our guest, Amy. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy has designed templates and written a book that can be used to create the totes featured in this program. The templates are $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Book is included free with purchase. To order this reference material, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com 2706. Order item number BK2706, Hobo Totes, Casual to Classic Templates, and Free Book. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.